liberal radio network where I was working when I gave my life to Christ gave me a gag gift when I departed, so to speak, a new King James Version Bible. I read it so much it fell apart. While I usually preach and teach from that edition, I've been part of many churches that use the King James. There's one phrase in the KJV that I've been thinking about a lot lately. God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. That turn of phrase, not convenient, means not fitting, not right, not helpful. As our society champions convenient, instant money, instant entertainment, instant stardom, instant sex, instant relationships, instant acceptance, instant gratification, so on and so forth, it actually condemns itself under God's inconvenient truth. Today's convenience results in eternity's inconvenient hell. In today's message, God's inconvenient truth from Romans 124 to 26, we'll both see how our society is running full speed towards self-destruction both today and for eternity, and also that the Lord is yet willing to forgive and heal it, if only it will stop living for its own convenience. Let's go to our Father in prayer. Father God, I thank you so much for this chance to come before the people. Help me to share what you've given me well with your spirit. Oh Lord God, I pray for salvation, sanctification the filling of the Holy Spirit for the work of ministry. Oh, Lord God, bless this day, I pray. In Jesus Christ's holy name, amen. <laughs> the great apostle Paul wrote the book of Romans, not in Rome, but Greece's Corinth, about 56 AD or 30 years after our Lord's crucifixion. Rome was the capital of the world's largest empire. It had a million people. They were a cosmopolitan, diverse, densely packed group with extremely loose morals and many gods. In marked contrast to today's ethos of go along to get along, Paul tells the budding church in Rome that God wants his people to worship him in spirit, that is, with right theology, and truth with right lifestyles. Our Lord also warns of hypocrisy, that is, saying we follow Christ, but living like those who don't believe. In this section of scripture, Paul talks of those who knew God through his magnificent work in making the universe, but refused to honor him by doing as he commanded. We start with Romans 1, verses 24 and 25. God gave them up to uncleanness and the lusts of their hearts to dishonor their bodies among themselves, who exchanged the truth of God for the lie and worshiped and served the creature rather than the creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. Our society stresses that we should do whatever we want, live in any way we like, as long as it hurts no one else. But there is no victimless crime with God. Putting people ahead of our Lord means we worship them, not him, and that will damn our souls and harm our bodies, which are the temple of the Holy Spirit, according to Paul's 1 Corinthians 6, 19. Romans 1, verses 26 and 27. For this reason, God gave them up to vile passions, for even their women exchanged the natural use for what is against nature. Likewise, also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust for one another, men with men committing what is shameful and receiving in themselves the penalty of their error, which was due. Paul here explicitly teaches against homosexuality. It's not the only place he does so. See 1 Corinthians 6 and 1 Timothy 1. Elsewhere in the Bible, the practice is forbidden in Genesis 19, Leviticus 18 and 20, Ezekiel 16, and Revelation 21 and 22. Rome permitted the practice freely, and the empire's immorality ultimately led to its destruction. America not only permits homosexuality, it promotes it. God's hand of protection is lifting off the USA. Gay and lesbian activity is almost at the point of becoming ho-hum. Living as the other sex or gender is the new frontier, what's happening now. Gallup polls find one of every 14 Americans, 7.1%, identifies as LGBT. That's double the share of just a decade ago. And at least 20%, perhaps as many as 40% of those 25 or younger say they're lesbian, gay, bisexual, or transgender. I've led LGBT folks to Christ, and I am so glad I have. There is a far higher incidence of those lifestyles of mental health problems, medical troubles, and suicide. Many are LGBT because of difficult or distant relationships with parents, sexual abuse, or other problems. God wants to heal them and make them whole. Romans 1.28, And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a debased mind to do those things which are not fitting or not convenient. 
This is our focal verse today, how the Lord allows us to decide how to live, and we can forsake him if we so desire. Most of the United States says it believes in God, but three quarters of those who do refuse to go to any services online or in person. Their average giving to God is only 1.1%, about one-eighth of a tithe. They have time to go to work, take care of their homes, play with their children, surf on the internet, but they have no time for the Almighty Maker of all. This verse's term, debased mind, means having thinking that is wrongful, rejected, unapproved, unfit, cast off. Therefore, these people do that which is not convenient, that is not fitting, destroying their minds, bodies, and souls. And just what is not fitting, becoming, convenient, Romans 1, 29 to 31 tells us, being filled with all unrighteousness, sexual immorality, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, evil-mindedness. They are whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, violent, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, undiscerning, untrustworthy, unloving, unforgiving, and unmerciful. Lest you think this message is a diatribe on sexual perversion, here we see the true length, breadth, and depth of depravity to which people descend if failing to follow the Lord. These individuals, remember, knew God. The word knew is gnosko. That's not a head knowledge. It's intimacy. The Jews use it to describe sexual intercourse. So here we have people who've known the true God through his creation. His mighty works, excellence, love, truth, and decided to turn their backs on his instruction. And look what they become. This list is quite similar to 2 Timothy 3, verses 1 to 5, which discusses how in the last days people will have a form of godliness but deny our Lord's power, insisting they cannot conform to Christ, and that God is fine with their deliberate disobedience. These people are greedy, gossips, cowardly, going behind people's backs, arrogant, hateful, bearing grudges, contentious, lying continually, unloving, without mercy, and crowds piling on and killing. And those are the ones who populate our screens and senses today. They talk constantly on social media about getting their parents' inheritance, but will do nothing to help mother or father. They won't confront us, but slander us to others and set traps for us. They think they know everything, but truly have little understanding or wisdom. They're unwilling to forgive, unable to function properly, and ultimately only willing to be murderers of all who oppose them. And these are those who will worship Antichrist willingly. Romans 1.32. These are they who, knowing the righteous judgment of God, that those who practice such things are deserving of death, not only do the same, but also approve of those who practice them. Paul says these people are hypocrites. They say, oh, this person lies so much. Well, he's actually telling the truth. And it's they who lie. They call others intolerant, but won't allow any other views to be heard. They say Christians are too political, but their whole world is politic, having no regard for the true and living God. Our Lord Jesus railed against hypocrites 20 times in the Gospels alone. We must not think that we will escape his gaze. For he knows our minds, our hearts, our words, and our actions without a single exception. Romans 2, verses 1 to 3. Therefore, you are inexcusable, O oh man, whoever you are who judge. For in whatever you judge another, you condemn yourself. For you who judge practice the same things. But we know that the judgment of God is according to truth against those who practice such things. And do you think this, O oh man, you who judge those practicing such things and doing the same, that you will escape the judgment of God? <laughs> Better not. People sit on Twitter all day and lie about others, never bothering to look up facts. They see how greedy a person is, but post on Facebook how much they want this person's thus and such. They put on TikTok how an official has no respect for the Constitution when they themselves would deny free speech to everyone who disagrees. If this fits you, then know that Almighty God sees and knows and will put you into hell for it. On Judgment Day, there will be no excuse you can give, no lie you can tell, no place you can escape. Very soon, in fact, any moment, 
The rapture will take every born-again believer from earth, leaving only the worldly behind. The globe that emerges will be so chaotic, so murderous, so selfish, so hateful, that after three and a half years, the inhabitants will allow Antichrist, a man filled with the devil's spirit, to rule over them. And then they will worship him in order to buy and sell. That's a rather bleak picture, isn't it? Ah, but God's grace is not yet over. Romans 2, verses 4 to 6. Do you despise the riches of God's goodness, forbearance, long-suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leads you to repentance? But in accordance with your hardness and your impenitent heart, you're treasuring up for yourself wrath in the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God, who will render to each one according to their works. There is no escape from God's judgment. We answer for everything we've done unless we repent of our sins, bow our knee to Christ, and surrender to the Lord. Oh, my friend, this is God's goodness. In Greek, that word is krestos, meaning divine kindness that works what is right according to the Lord and is most helpful to us. Those not saved now still can be and even escape the worst seven years the world has ever seen. The tribulation of Antichrist, the mark of the beast, false prophet, and at least four billion deaths. Uh, but the Lord's offer is going to expire shortly. If we don't know Jesus at the rapture, we go through the tribulation. If we don't know him by the second coming, then we've survived hell on earth only to go to the true hell forever. Come to Jesus today. Don't hesitate. This may be the last time you ever hear how to be saved. And anyone extends an opportunity to you to accept Christ as Lord and Savior. We're going to pray shortly. Today we have five takeaways, aspects that I want you to remember and apply. Number one, God respects his creation, man and woman, so much he allows them to decide how they'll live their lives and where they'll spend eternity. God respects his creation, man and woman, so much he allows them to decide how they'll live their lives and where they'll spend eternity. Carlton Pearson, the former evangelical who one day decided that a loving God couldn't send people to hell, recently went there himself, unfortunately, because he never realized the power the Lord gives us. We could have been robots, automaton, forced to bow to God and to give him everything, but he wanted genuine worship, real love, true affection, and willing obedience from us. Number two, God hates when we put ourselves or other people before him. And that's what practicing sexual perversion does. It was common in Paul's Rome, and that empire perished. It's everywhere here in America today, and our land will fall too. Number two, God hates when we put ourselves or other people before him. And that's what practicing sexual perversion does. It was common in Paul's Rome, and that empire perished. It's everywhere here in America today. And our land will fall too. We may even be worse than Rome. We have the full scripture now, the research showing the diseases and harms such lifestyles do to the body, endless books about the broken lives resulting. Yet we're moving toward requiring everyone to accept those ways of life on pain of prison or death. Number three. When we focus so much on what we want, what we think, and what we like to do, then we give ourselves over to sin, and God gives us over to a harmful, disturbed mind. When we focus so much on what we want, what we think, and what we like to do, then we give ourselves over to sin, and God gives us over to a harmful, disturbed mind. That's not just for the LGBT either. That could be church folks. Why are so many services attended by so few today? Why is there so little money given to the church and Christian causes by those who say that they are faithful? Well, because we put more value on our jobs, families, and houses than we do Almighty God. That's the plain truth. Number four, our society stresses convenience. Make everything easy. Have it your way. You deserve it. But that leads us to God's inconvenient truth. Today's convenience results in eternity's inconvenient hell. Today's inconvenient faithfulness to God brings his wonderful, unfathomably convenient heaven. Number four, our society stresses convenience. Make everything easy. Have it your way. You deserve it. 
that leads us to God's inconvenient truth. Today's convenience results in eternity's inconvenient hell. Today's inconvenient faithfulness to God brings his wonderful, unfathomably convenient heaven. Galatians 6, 8 puts it this way. He who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption, but he who sows to the spirit will of the spirit reap everlasting life. Oh, isn't that wonderful and hopeful? Number five, here's the good news, the best we could ever hear. We still can avoid hell and gain heaven by turning from our sin and deciding to follow Jesus. The good news, the best we could ever hear, we still can avoid hell and gain heaven by turning from our sin and deciding to follow Jesus. Should we repent today, we'll have escaped the worst week of years, seven years, this whole earth will ever see as well as unending death. We can go through the tribulation if we want, but it will be exponentially more difficult to turn to Jesus as Antichrist breathes down our neck. Should we fail to accept Christ as Lord and Savior, we could survive the three world wars and four billion or more deaths of the seven years and yet go straight to hell at the second coming of Jesus. My friend, the rapture is at any moment. Don't miss that or heaven. Come to Christ now. If you're seeing this after the rapture, then accept him as Lord and Savior and refuse the mark. How do you get that salvation? Well, there are four essentials. Number one, repent of sin. Turn from it and ask God's forgiveness. He surely shall forgive you it. Confess faith in Jesus Christ that he is the way, the truth, and the life, and there is no way to the Father but by him. Believe that Jesus Christ rose in body and spirit that third day in the tomb. We will overcome the world in Jesus, both that we can touch as well as that we cannot. <laughs> and follow Jesus as Lord and Savior. You'll do it imperfectly just like I do. Do I still sin? Oh, yes. I have not become Jesus yet, but I have a spirit. We're getting a little bit closer each day, I pray. <laughs> and you can too. I'm going to lead a prayer of repentance and faith in God to receive Jesus as Lord and Savior. And if you just keep following Jesus after praying that, and you believe what you're saying, you're going to walk right into heaven one day. Let's go to our Lord in prayer. Father God, I repent of my sins. Please forgive me. I confess Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. There is no way to you except by him. I believe Jesus Christ rose in body and spirit the third day in the tomb. And I will follow him as Lord and Savior, repenting should I fall. Come into my heart, Lord God, and save me. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> Which means, so be it, that little Hebrew word. Well, if you prayed that, you've entered the kingdom of God. What do you do now? First of all, be baptized. Jesus Christ himself was the only person who didn't have to be baptized, and he was at the beginning of his ministry. Read about it in Matthew 3. It's a sign of obedience to Almighty God. Read the Bible. You can possess those 7,500 promises within its pages, almost one for every hour in a year, by learning Scripture. And pray that you would receive what you're reading. If you don't have that love, peace, patience, loving kindness, goodness, gentleness, and self-control, pray for it. Ask God. Maybe join hands and hearts with someone else, too, to pray to receive that. Come to church online or in person. Oh, friends, but be in a Bible-believing and practicing church where there is love, where there is compassion, where there is forgiveness, and there is togetherness. Fellowship with other believers. Spend time outside of services with each other. Give me a call. Send me an email. I would love to have it. K-H-U-C-K-I-N-S at eternitynow.com, 806-463-8793. And pursue personal relationship with Almighty God. Yes, you can know him. He knows you even better than you know yourself. And he'd love you to know him that way too. Remember, Eternity Now is an evangelism outreach at church headquartered in Scottsbluff, Nebraska, and touching the world. 
See the weekly message live Saturdays, 5 p.m. Mountain on Facebook.com slash Eternity Now Media, YouTube.com slash Add Eternity Now, Twitter, Zach Kyle Huckins, and our LinkedIn too. We also have a Revelation Bible study Wednesdays, 7 p.m. Mountain, same pages and platforms. Our group's a little over three years old. We've reached over 2 million people for Christ, and we want to reach another 1 million this year, but we need your help. Donating $25 a month, tax deductible, will reach 10,000 people in a year. Just go to bit.ly slash reach a million. Again, bit.ly slash reach a million. All one word there after the slash to see more and give securely. If you give $25 a month, I'll send you a certificate that you're a witness for Christ and $50 a month an evangelist. Give the gift of Jesus this year. Wouldn't it be great for your friend to get one of those certificates under the tree? Well, let's go to our Father in prayer now. Oh, Lord God, empower those who've just come to Christ to live for him all of their days. Give them special encouragement and protection of you. For those who've been saved a while, renew and refresh us by your Holy Spirit. Give us all the power to overcome the world through Christ. Help us share the gospel with anyone who listen and draw to yourself those to whom we witness. We pray for a harvest of souls today. And I pray in particular for those of the LGBT folk. You've used me to help some of them find forever with you. Use this message to do it again. Let them know that you will accept them in your beloved son. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm pastor and evangelist Kyle Huckins, thanking you for worshiping with Eternity Now. Be sure to take a look at our main website, www.eternitynow.com, E-T-E-R-N-I-T-Y-N-O-W.com, where you can find links to all our videos, where to download our new podcast, see our beliefs, my writings for National Christian Outlets, the Way of Salvation, and more. You can contact me personally at khuckins at eternitynow.com, or phone or text me 806-463-8793. May the Lord bless you and keep you, cause his face to shine upon you, and give you peace. Shout, hallelujah. Shout.